Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Hi, Paul Clark, and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you, lovely lot today? Well, we're going to have a go at another line and wash, and this time we're taking a trip to the beautiful county of Cornwall, where we're going to be painting this lovely little harbourside gift shop. And we've also got a little bit of a review. We're going to be having a look at this Derwent line and wash paint pan set. So, did they send you that to review? No. I bought it with all my own pocket money. Oh, that's all right then. Get him. Anyway, please come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, so here is the product which I paid £25 for on Amazon, although they change the prices all the time. So you get two black line markers, a 0.3 and a 0.8. So it's um, a decent sturdy plastic box, nice and compact. You get a water brush, which I personally rarely use, but always good to have. And perhaps the size is a little small to be really useful. There's also a little yellow sponge at the side. Also a little color swatch chart, which is always good to have. Now, for the paints, you do get a good selection with 12 colours. Now, there are six from the Ink Tents range, which include Sun Yellow, Mango, Poppy Red, Bright Blue, Payne's Grey and Natural Brown. Then four from the Graffy Tint range, which includes Autumn Brown, Port, Ocean Blue and Meadow. And finally, two pastel shade colours, Artichoke and Storm Grey. Now I do find these an odd selection of colours, quite a lot of muted neutrals, but I'm guessing they very much had the Urban Sketcher in mind for this set. Now I've used many Derwent art products over the years, but never their paints, so I'm really interested in seeing how these perform. So my paper is something I don't usually use, and it's some smooth, hot press paper by Langton. It's £140, but this demo will work using any of your normal watercolour papers. And two brushes from my range, a number 6 and a number 12 round. OK, so here's the reference photo, which I got from Google Street View, of this pretty little gift shop. Now, you'll find it in the picturesque fishing port in Cornwall, here in the UK. And I was reliably informed when I first visited there many years ago that the proper pronunciation is Mousel, not mouse hole, as you would expect. So with most of my line and washes, I like to do a pencil line drawing first. And you can see I've simplified it a bit by removing the people in the doorway. Now a drawing template is free to download from my website, link in the description below. So if you are having a go at drawing this yourself, just be aware of the perspective, as everything on the buildings will go to the same vanishing point somewhere off the paper, but the road won't because it's going uphill. So I'm going to be using the bigger of the two markers, the 0.8, and getting in straight away with a good loose sketchy line, leaving lots of gaps. And because you already have the pencil line there, you can draw with real freedom and expression. Nice wobbly lines with lots of character. So this stage took me about 30 minutes, so I'm going to speed up the process for you. Now I'm quite happy with this pen, it gives a good solid black line, but one thing I noticed fairly quickly was because of the design of the nib, you have to keep the angle of the pen fairly upright. Now if you're someone who likes to sketch quickly at a low angle, then it's definitely an issue. So if you compare it with the Staedtler Lumo colour, holding the pen at the same angle, you can clearly see the difference. Now I mean, it's not a major problem, but just something to be aware of. Thank you. 
also note that I'm constantly changing the position of my wrist just to make the drawing angle easier. So when all the black ink work is totally dry, then rub out all the pencil work with a soft eraser. But note I'm leaving the name of the shop. So yes, the lettering on the sign here does give us some issues as it's white on a darker background. Now there's a number of ways we can do this. One would be to paint on at the end with some white gouache, acrylic or even a white gel pen but I'm going for the option of masking out with some masking fluid and I'm going to be using a ruling pen for this but you could use any old brush. Off we go and as usual wetting the sky with clean water and then dropping in some of the bright blue leaving large gaps for the clouds. Now, the thing is, if you are painting along with this, it's unlikely that you will have this line and wash paint set, so there's no point in me mentioning all the colours I'm using. But I think with this project, you can use all your own colours. Just have fun and experiment and make it your own. Wetting the road area first here, and then dropping in a warmish grey. Now I haven't used hot press paper for some time and it's amazing how different it acts compared to the cold press or rough textured paper. The washes just seem to sit on the surface of the paper for longer and they don't spread quite so evenly. Here I'm using a cooler grey for these shadows, something a little nearer to the sky than the colour of the road. And I love to use these diagonal cast shadows that you sometimes see forming across the front of buildings. And here I'm just using a stippling effect to try and create the illusion of that stone texture along the front. I like the way that this property here is a nice sort of warm bricky colour which gives a nice contrast to the white of the shop. Okay, so now I'm beginning to come in with some nice dark shadows to really start to get some contrast. Now this window in the centre here is quite intriguing. It's obviously been filled in. Now I originally thought it might have something to do with the window tax introduced in the 18th century, but I think it's more to do with the fact this property has been divided into two, and I don't reckon you can have half a window in each house. Anyway, what's that got to do with anything? Next, I'm painting in this roof with a really nice wet wash of grey, and I want to drop in some orange wet in wet to create that effect of growth that you get on a lot of old properties. And for these ridge tiles, just a slightly more reddish colour.
Now for the roses. Now this is what this set lacked, was a nice bright pink. So I'm using a Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose, but any bright pink will do. Now whenever I'm painting flowers with greenery around them, I always like to get the flower colour down first, guaranteeing it's painted on white paper for the brightest results. Next for all the foliage, and I'm now using my number six brush and painting in two greens. The first a very yellowy green, and then dropping in wet in wet a darker bluey green. And again, you can be very free and loose with your brush strokes. It really doesn't matter if you paint outside the line work. So make sure here that you paint around each of the roses and if you end up leaving little white gaps it really doesn't matter, it all adds to the effect. And again dropping in a darker bluey green on the shadow side. So now we need to let this totally dry, so it's a perfect time for a short break. And what about a glass of Cornish Best? So here I'm just building up the details with some darker greys, always working from light to dark. Now even though the village is pronounced Mousel, I do love these two little mice and a mouse hole painted on the wall, so I just have to include them. And just splatting in some textured effect on the wall. Next, a nice deep blue for the shop sign here and dropping in a little shadow along the top. Could they keep me company? Next for the woodwork and another colour which isn't included in the set is a green leaning blue like cerulean. So I'm using my favourite cerulean blue by Schmincke. Oh, oh. Next, back with my greys, and we need to get a really nice dark contrast in the doorway and in the windows. And watch the stars dance. 
is upon the bay And asked the lovely night if she could stay These little light bulbs here can be any colour you like. And for these little cups and mugs here, they can be anything you want, nice and loose, just suggesting detail. Some more Payne's Grey here, just bringing out now the darker details. All done with my number 6 brush. Although not in the reference photo, I always like to add a little bit of blue sky in the top windows to help with the illusion of reflecting glass, and then blending it in with the grey below. Just a little more wall texture. And of course a bit of splatting to give the impression of some texture here in the road. Next it's time to remove the masking fluid and then just tidying up some of the edges of the lettering with the dark blue. I'm just adding in a light grey shadow on the top of the lettering. Now I think I want this property over here to be a little bit more on the yellowy brown side. So I'm just coming in with a very watery wash of yellow ochre straight over top. And that's the beauty of watercolour, laying these transparent washes.
So now I'm basically finished with all the colour work. I'm making sure it's dry and coming back in with my pen to strengthen some of the line work and add in a few final details. So it's a good opportunity to give you my thoughts on these Derwent paints. Generally, I think they're pretty good. They're slightly different from traditional watercolours and the intense colours are really super bright and lift off very well. The four graphite tint colours have a granular feel to them, which I quite like, giving a nice speckled texture to them. Now, there are several colours which are very similar and some I would rarely use, but for a small, compact, reasonably priced set for taking out on the road, I think these are great. And I'll give them a good 8.5 out of 10. Okay, now to finish off some nice gooey white gouache straight from the tube for some lovely little highlights and details. go all done in just over three hours well I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go and if you are interested in the Derwent line and wash set there is a link below through Jackson's as I said we're not sponsored but we do get a small commission and I believe they're selling it at a very reasonable price at the moment so so, as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free. Leave a comment. I do read every single one. Unfortunately, I can't reply to them all. And have a great week. I look forward to seeing you again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Cheers now, everyone.